Hello, my friends, and welcome back to MTD CNC. Do you see this gorgeous machine behind me? Well, we're about to learn a lot of details about it. it I mean, I've used it before. I gotta say it again. Is machining sexy to you? Because it is to me. And when I see a setup like this, which Ari is gonna help me describe here with Gossiger Automation, you will probably find it sexy as well. And if you're not, leave it in the comments because we're gonna convince you in another way. Trust me, Ari. Okay, I'm extremely excited to see this machine. I know some of the details which have literally given me chill bumps because I know what it can do for the audience watching right now and how it can be implemented in shops with vertical integration, with flexibility, the multiple jobs. Yes. I know you're the expert. I know it's important for you to convey these messages. Would you mind starting wherever you want to start yep. and we'll navigate through because there are so many positives to this setup. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the best place to start really is uh, back at IMTS 2022. We really unveiled kind of the predecessor to this unit was the RCX is going to be the version 1.0. Um, however, that unit, you know, was really a two sided rotary table with a, a smaller robot on it, less payload. But really what people and our customers are driving towards is they want um, a, a larger robot with more payload, more reach to be able to service as larger Akuma Genos M660 type of machines, those uh, larger platforms with you know, vices, uh, you throw up to three vices on the table or maybe even a fourth axis rotary to really finish those parts complete. Service some of those larger five axis machines like the uh, Kuma MU4000, um, those kind of machines. So this unit, you know, we, we unveiled that at IMTS 2022, uh, but we really looked at it and we thought, we you know, we really want to kind of go back to the drawing board here. Uh, there were th some things we didn't like about it in terms of the part queue, especially when the parts got larger. Um, we didn't have all eight multi-grip bikes inside the uh, the robots working envelope at any given time so that kind of uh, pulled us back a little bit so the team really did an excellent job here of listening to all the feedback from IMTS listening to some of our customer feedback um, some of the things we like some of the things we didn't like right and they went through the redesign process here earlier this year so they've been working tireless tirelessly here this uh, this year in preparation to unveil this brand new unit here uh, at Gosker fest this year so this unit is really designed for the low volume, high mix job shop manufacturer. Um, maybe the people that are traditionally looking at a, uh, maybe a horizontal machining center, right? To load up multiple parts into what I would say, quote unquote, simple automation, right? Because they're looking at the ways, at ways to get unattended runtime, right? That's really the most, uh, that's automation in the most generalized term is unattended runtime. So, but the nice thing about this unit is it's smaller, it's compact, it's very flexible. We have the multi, you know, you can stage up to eight different single op jobs here, 288 pieces at the smallest part capacity, right? Um, so you have a lot of unattended runtime, but it, it schedules the jobs and then changes them over automatically. So the robot goes down to the bottom, uh, picks up the multi-grip base jaws, uses the multi-grip jaws uh, and, and soft jaws tooling to pick up a, a raw workpiece and then loads that entire assembly into the machine. And then you can turn it over to run op 20. You could even turn it over to load it in through a, a, a fourth axis rotary uh, to complete you know, all six sides of a, of a cube. Um, but it's really you know, finishing that part complete. The other side of it is we have a lot of customers that run parts on dovetails, right? Um, you know, and they use those single point vices. This allows us to get into that market. But what we really like about this solution is you can finish that complete part without touching it, right? Without the operator fixturing every single part onto a vice, onto a uh, fixture. Um, the operator's just loading parts, raw parts, into this unit. So again, it's a three-sided rotary. Um, so loading raw parts, unloading finished parts. They're not touching any fixturing. They're not handling any parts. They're not manipulating any parts. Um, so the return on investment is just incredible, typically around six months. Ari, do you know why I love talking to you? No. Because you are thorough. Your words have meaning and purpose and you educate an audience at a really advanced level. I think it's so important, everything you just went over, it's every single question I wanted to ask and probably the audience <laughs> watching as well. But I just have to, because I'm so intrigued and, and I enjoy watching this thing move, and I wanna just amplify some of these parts of the conversation because yeah. yeah. I think it's important. Absolutely. And I, I, I wanna take this a little bit from 
you're an expert speaking at an expert level and I'm a beginner speaking at a beginner level, right? So at the bottom here, I have jaws going in and out of the machine. So I can literally switch jobs on the go as it's working. The second tier looks like some rectangle blocks. The third tier here looks like some round bar. And I go up, I see rectangle again. Everything you already described, I'm just bringing back up again yeah. to, because I think it's important. But we are going from job to job, part to part. It's not a rectangle universal. I can switch out any rectangle part I want. And now I'm getting a bit long-winded because I'm excited about it, but it really is. I can plug it in on the side of the machine over here or on my computer and say, this is what I need to do next. It absolutely. truly is for that high mix, low volume yes. job shop. Yes, it? absolutely. These units are all designed specifically for the job shop. Just like we just spoke about previously, why would I automate a 20 piece job? Well, you'd automate a 20 piece job because you don't have the operator standing there. You don't have your skilled labor tied up, you know, loading, unloading parts and pressing cycle start, right? You're able to load that job up and the robot, you know, schedules that project or the operator really schedules that project on the HMI and the robot's just calling up that program after we've went through 10 pieces or after we went through five pieces and on to the next job. It does that simultaneously and automatically without an operator being involved. Wow. And something else I want to bring up just to reiterate what Ari said earlier is this was unveiled at IMTS and maybe at that time it was its perfect version, but they saw some places where they could help you better. And so they did. Now we're unveiling the 2.0 or the 3.0 or the 4.0. Yeah, we're going to continue to evolve here at yes. Gossinger. I absolutely love that. Now I have to ask you a question, Ari, because the audience knows, you know, I'm an advocate of pallet pools. <laughs> how does a pallet pool compare to this and how does this compare to a pallet pool? Yeah. So, you know, they're both good, uh, you know, entry levels into automation, right? Because in the most generalized term, you know, automation is unintended runtime. And that's where you have the, you know, the folks that are looking at a th going from a three axis vertical machining center into a horizontal, you know, and maybe putting, loading as many parts up on a four, you know, four sided tombstone as possible, or and then going into a pallet pool type of scenario. The challenge is there is you have an operator touching every single one of those pieces. And uh, let's say that it's a cube, there's six sides to a cube. You cannot finish that part complete without touching it again and reloading it, right? Uh, so you know, there's some limitations there. There's a lot of direct labor content into putting every single, you know, a, a person, an operator is touching every single one of those pieces and probably twice, right? Just to get a finished part. Right. So you know, with this solution, it's smaller, it's more compact. Um, it's highly flexible, but it also allows the operator to load raw material in and get finished material out with all six sides of that cube finished if, if that's what you need. On top of that, and you may have said it earlier, but it was something I found fascinating about this setup, is even though we're looking at a wall here of mm -hmm. options, this whole thing rotates. I see a letter yes, B right there. Absolutely. We have an A and a C as well, don't Correct. we? Correct, absolutely. Yeah, so the other sides of this, there's two other sides of this, this triangle um, that the operator can walk up at any given time and add and remove uh, raw material, finished material from it. So those are completely un unobstructed and un um, not closed off. So, you know, while the robot's working on this side, the operator can be pulling up the last job off and putting the, new, the next one on. So. I want to talk safety real quick, and it wasn't a planned mm -hmm. part of this conversation, yeah. but because we're standing yeah. right beside of it yeah. and maybe we're grinding knives, who knows? Let's right. just throw out a scenario. Yeah. If I step just to the other side of this line, yeah. it shuts down, right? We're talking safety. Yep. Even though there's not a fence right here, we have one on the side. Yes. This thing will stop moving the moment I cross this line. Absolutely, yeah. So um, all of our AWR units utilize area scanners, right? We're, we're utilizing six axis Spanic industrial robots, right? Um, they're, these aren't collaborative robots. We have another collaborative right next to us that we, we roll out on other projects, right? Um, but we utilize the area scanner to make a six axis industrial robot collaborative in nature by utilizing the area scanner. So there's minimal guarding here. Um, you know, an operator can walk right in. You could put this in uh, service mode or shipping mode so the robot tucks up and out out of the way and allowing an operator to turn system link off on his Akuma OSB control, roll a car up here and run this thing manually if he wants to, right? The ultimate flexibility for the job shop. Again, these are systems that are designed for the job shop with the job shop manufacturer in mind. We know what their lives are. We know how to make this thing work for them um, day in and day out, even at night. Well, I'm sure the audience, much like myself, feels very convinced at the moment and wants to give Gossiker a call to see if we can implement it. So one last piece that I think is important to convey. And we've done this in other videos, so we want to do it again because maybe the audience missed the other video. And if you have, go check it out. It's worth seeing. Ari is brilliant. Have you ever seen the movie The Nutty Professor? I have not. 
Well, in that movie, he gets on the floor, he goes, yes, I can. Yes, I can. You know why I'm bringing that up? Is because this is American made. And yes, we can reshore. And yes, we can buy American products because it's affordable, because this is how we compete on a global level. Yes, yes we can do American made. This is also American made, yes. isn't it? Yes, absolutely. All of these AWR units are Gosker automation units, whether they're standard, whether they're modified, whether they're full custom, are designed and built by our engineering team here in Dayton, Ohio. Ari, I don't want you to drop my microphone because it's very expensive and I'm going to give you a little bit of love for this conversation, but that is a mic drop conversation, a mic drop moment. Thank you all for watching, Ari. You're incredible. I enjoy talking with you. Your statements are always profound. Really great technology. Thank you all for watching. Check out Gossiger, mtdcnc.com to learn more about this subject.